this was her one of her first times back to eat prayer with all of us so um she was there too and my friend was so excited to see all four girls because she helped take care of them she helped um watch them while me and dad might have caught a movie or dinner or whatever and so she was a big part of their lives and she taught at the elementary school that they were in so sometimes she'd take them to school with her so they had a bond with her and she loves those girls and so to see all four of them as adults just really emotionally took her out so she was sitting on my sajada with me and with them and her back is facing unbeknownst to her her back is facing my co-wife who had come up after her with my bonus baby Coach Fatsma, one third of Outstanding Personal Relationships and OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com, where we help couples find fulfillment whether they practice monogamy or polygyny. Now, this is a story time. I don't think I've done a story time before on our channel, but I'm going to start doing more. We're going to start doing more of those. Um, this story time is of epic proportions because. This story time involves one of my very dear friends not wanting to meet my co-wife. And let me just get right into it. Okay, now, disclaimer. This video isn't created to create um, tension or anger or hurt feelings by any means. This is an informational, um, much needed video because... I have extremely loyal friends and I have a very extremely loyal co-wife and this was not planned. <laughs> this was not planned, meaning that their meeting wasn't planned. It was not manufactured. It happened in a very organic way. But this video is to really help break some of those um, tense kind of barriers that others might externally set up. Um, and I know my friend did that. <laughs> Shout out to her. I won't be saying her name so that she can keep some type of peace and normalcy in her life. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, beautiful day, somewhat like today here in the upper Midwest. Eid, it was actually Eid, and we all went to Eid. My co-wife was in a different aisle than myself and my daughters because we came um, a, a tad bit after of the rest of everyone else. We don't drive a bus going to eat. We all have multiple cars getting to eat because it's a lot of us. So we found a space. It's difficult to find parking for eat. Um, most of us know it can be, you gotta get there really on time and early to, to get parking. We were there before the eat prayer, of course, but people were still filing in. Um, my children and myself were part of that group that were filing in. So we sat in the rows that were empty, you know. So we sit sitting there and then we pray the Eid prayer. And then after the Eid prayer, um, right after my friend spotted me, I'm kind of hard to miss. I'll say that. I'll own that. I'll wear it literally and figuratively. <laughs> but she um, waved. And from where I was sitting, I could see my co-wife. Then I saw my friend, and then there's the, the, the rows after them, and I was there. So it was boom, boom, boom. Now, my friend is very tiny, so and she's very petite. She's a small woman. She's always been tiny. She probably always will ever be tiny. And she's um, older than the rest of us, my co-wife included. She's, she is, she's, I would say, about... 20 years older than me 
yeah, about 20 years older than me, and I met her when I was 19. Um, she is a very sweet, kind, gentle woman, and she's known for her gentle voice, her gentle nature and demeanor. Very well loved by many, you know, and um, she's such a gem of a woman. She just is. I love that sister. Alhamdulillah. May Allah protect her. I mean, so um, <laughs> I'm starting to feel itchy. <coughs> Excuse me. During the summer, just a little disclaimer, another disclaimer. Um, this is a tough time for me for my asthma. So I have this dry cough that can happen if I'm talking too much or too fast. <laughs> so forgive me for that. Now let's get back to the story now. We sit in grass. I'm kind of miserable. It's hot. The sun is beating. And some genius in our community decided to cut down a wall of trees to suit whatever they're trying to build. Like, I mean, the community, the city that I live in, in the city, not the Muslim community. So we always have our Eid um, prayer on this grass, but there's usually trees there. But they cut them down this year. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, there's nowhere to run <laughs> from this heat. So we're sitting there and then my friend finds me and she's like, oh, I'm to the sun, like I'm even louder because she gives me this huge hug. On this particular Eid, all four of my daughters were there. And this is a rarity because they might be in different places. Um, they're all grown. They all are doing their own stuff. So the majority of the time, the three uh daughters that are so there's the oldest daughter and then there's three younger daughters under there right the oldest you know this was her one of her first times back to eat prayer with all of us so um she was there too and my friend was so excited to see all four girls because she helped take care of them she helped um watch them while me and dad might have caught a movie or dinner or whatever. And so she was a big part of their lives. And she taught at the elementary school that they were in. So sometimes she'd take them to school with her. So they had a bond with her. And she loves those girls. And so to see all four of them as adults just really emotionally took her out. So she was sitting on my sajada with me and with them. And her back is facing unbeknownst to her her back is facing my co-wife who had come up after her with my bonus baby because we're a family we we end up back with each other after the e prayer if we kind of get lost in the um the shuffle we'll find each other after the prayer and then we spend time together we take our pictures that some of you may have seen on our socials so um and then we kiki and we we laugh and we have a good time and uh with the girls so I knew that my co-wife was behind her back, but she didn't know. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is about to get interesting because it's only interesting because um, your friends, if you've been in a marriage as long as I have, get used to what they're used to. They're not used to co-wives. They're not used to, I don't care how long it's been. They weren't used to it. They weren't used to polygyny, her. Um, they hadn't really talked to her. Some of them have met her. Um, and everything went fine because I, I got some really great women in my life, period. I just do. And great women tend to get along pretty good, you know, because they don't want the drama. They don't want the smoke. They don't want to be the, 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 um, the, the genesis of the drama. They don't want to be the one that's starting stuff. And we're all accountable. We're all Muslim. So, um, my co-wife again was sitting there and my friend didn't know. So... My friend and I were talking and laughing about my daughters and I'm talking about how old they are and telling my little jokes. You guys know I am telling my jokes and my co-wife is talking to my daughters too and we kind of, everybody's buzzing because it's Eid and we're all happy, right? I'm, I, my allergies are coming for me, but we're all happy. So uh, I my, my friend was holding my hand. She was holding my hand and then she um, she was like, She's wondering where I was looking. I said, well, my co-wife is behind you. Close, but close behind her, but not too close where she could hear us. My co-wife couldn't really hear us. We were talking about everybody was everywhere. 
Plus, she was talking to the kids, so she was having her own conversations. And so, <laughs> my friend, she did this funny thing where she's holding my hand. My hand is on my lap, but our laps are touching like this. And she kind of fell over our hands and leaned over and was like, oh, <laughs> you know, like that. And I said, oh, and then she comes back up because she, she knew that it did not look good. And it wasn't polite to just sit there and act like she, you know, I told her she was there. So being who she is, it would have been rude for her to just kind of get up and walk away. Of, oh, she might have wanted to for fear of rejection, for fear of, I don't want to meet her. I've got anxiety because my friend has a lot of anxiety. Bless her heart. She has a lot of anxiety. So I get it. I get it. And she didn't have to. She didn't have to meet her. She didn't have to. But I looked at her and I told my friend, I said, it's been, it's been 11 years. And that's all I said. So she made the decision. And then I was like, you know what? Because if you hadn't have met her, and it's such a joyous occasion, and it's been 11 years, you know, we haven't had any battles. We haven't had any strife or stress or any of that. Uh, my friends haven't had any of that with my co wife. She just was like, um, I said, it just doesn't look right. Because my bonus baby's sitting there, my co wife's sitting there, my daughters are sitting there, you know, and we're all Muslim, and it is Eid. This is not, we ran into each other at, at, you know, the burger joint, you know, this was Eid. This mattered a lot. So, um, I said, um, I said, okay, you'll be fine. Cause I'm there. I'm there. I'm, I'm supporting her. I'm supporting her. Loud car. And so I, um, turn it, you know, I was like, yeah, she, oh, this is my co-wife, Nyla, and this is my friend, da, da, da. They met each other, hugged each other, and that was it. And it was nice. So my friend turns back to me, and I said, and see, nobody got killed. And it went, went well. She laughed because she knew. Um, she didn't want to, but she knew that it was peaceful, and it was nice, and it was, you did it, you know? It was a, a, a tremendous milestone, and she learned that my co-wife don't bite. <laughs> So that was part of it too. But um, I learned that my friends, if they know I'm okay, they're okay. You know, they're okay. But when, when you have someone in front of you and you know there's a co-wife, but then she's right there, then it kind of changes, you know. But my friends have been so great and so gracious and so welcoming and that matters to me because we all are Muslim women and I know we don't have to and we don't have to build anything. They don't have to be friends. They don't have to kick it in. They don't have to exchange numbers. But when our daughters saw that, it was such a great moment for our family to go, okay, this auntie of mine hugged my mother's co-wife, you know? And it was so powerful because it taught them some togetherness even though it has not been easy. It's taught them togetherness and it's Eid and we didn't ruin it and we didn't start drama and she, my friend didn't start drama. It was a really great moment for our family and my friend is my family. My friends are my family. Ooh, the door. <laughs> my friends are my family. So that meant so much to me. Um, so you don't have to, your friends don't have to. Your co-wife doesn't have to. That can go both ways. But it just means a lot when women come together and support and hug each other and hug it out and, and get to meet one another. Maybe even ask questions if they want to. Um, it's just so much benefit. And it took such a weight off of my friend's shoulder to finally meet her after so long because we all work and we're all busy and my friend's a teacher and COVID and teaching from home and just complete avoidance was the cause, you know, um, because a, a lot of co-wives, a lot of um, subsequent wives get put into this box that, you know, they get ostracized, they get thrown under the bus and some, you know, I know it's not easy and I know that some of it is not warranted. Some of it is, some initial wives act up, some initial wives get 
ostracized. I've had my fair share of all of it. And so is my co-wife. So um, just by sheer presence, you can get demonized in a relationship that is a polygynous marriage that the man has more than one wife. You can completely um, get disregarded, overlooked. Um, you get barbs thrown. But my friends have been very good at not doing that. They know the importance of not doing that. They're held accountable for that. Now, what goes on in the private mind is a whole nother matter. And this is old news. This is not new news. But to see someone sitting in front of you and know, okay, this is my friend's co-wife. How am I going to act? How am I going to um, treat her? You know, I'm sure that was going through the, the mind of my very dear friend. We didn't talk about it. They hugged and then she took pictures with my daughter. So it, um, it was awesome. It felt good. It didn't feel staged. It didn't feel uh, fake. It didn't feel put on or an act. It didn't feel any of that. It just felt like two sisters just hugging each other that met for the first time. That's how it felt. And I was so happy because I knew my co-wife could really handle this, um, you know, and, and give the hugs that she always gives, uh, you know, the sisters in our community to people that she loves. So I knew she could handle it, although it might have been like, yeah, I don't know how this person's going to act because I don't know her. So I'm sure there was some like um, uncertainty about the outcome. But since both of them are very sweet, I knew that putting them together in this way would not have a negative, um, they wouldn't have a negative re reaction to one another because they both have that very calm, chill demeanor of togetherness and trying to be understanding. So I really didn't have, a, a, there was no red flags or no reason for me not to say, you know, you all should meet each other because why should two good people meet each other? Just my friend should be like, well, I don't want to meet you because you married my friend's husband 11 years ago and that didn't have nothing to do with me and my friend's happy but I'm still mad it was not that it wasn't that and maybe some people do get mad maybe they do and I understandably so and understandably why and I understand but to carry on wasn't necessary in this instant and it just the whole grudges wasn't necessary and my friends have really dropped the situation and like okay cool but of course, like I said, seeing somebody in front of you is another, that's a, that's a different matter. That feels different. So I'm just really blessed and happy that they came together and it was cool and it was nice. And I actually had another friend call me that we have mutual friends with. And I know she wanted to ask me so bad about it because, um, our mutual friend was like, oh, I got pictures with the girls and there's no way she didn't bring this situation up. And that's OK, because I didn't either. I didn't bring it up either. So um, it feels so triumphant, but it's not nothing new. This 11 year polygynous journey is old and we've learned from it and we've taught and trained from it. And I'm just so happy that my co-wife met. Now, at least two of my friends, at least two of my friends, everybody knows of her, but they don't know her. They still don't know her. But um, they've had, two of my friends have actually met her, hugged her, and really were like, okay, okay, I don't get any bad vibes. <laughs> so they still checking for bad vibes, you know, on their end. But that felt so good because I told you guys that she's sweet. And um, I have a nickname for her. She knows what it is. And... It's because of her sweet nature. So I'm so happy. I'm so happy. And I'm happy that um, my friend knows that I'm okay. My co-wife's okay. Our family's okay. And we're happy. And it's genuine, you know, because that matters. Because the last thing somebody that loves you wants you to do is try to, you know, act like you're not in the pain that you're in because they want to help you. So for her to really know that I feel good and my co-wife and I were sitting together at the Eid, you know, after the Eid Salat and hanging out and talking and taking pictures, that helps her heal and that helps my friend heal more, you know, because she, she learned that this woman, my co-wife, is not this big bad wolf that she's been made out to be just because she merely exists, you know, just because 
she's merely here on a timeline that none of us created. You know, the, our Lord creates it. Allah creates that timeline. And we don't know who's going to be on it. So we have to really mind what we say and make dua and just come out of that thing and get that test and get the assignment right, like the youth always say. But I'm happy about them meeting because they're kind. I love them too. Um, yeah, so you don't need to push. It'll happen when it happens. If it happens, if it doesn't, that's okay too. Sometimes your friends just want to know you're all right. And that can go both ways. Sometimes the co-wife, the subsequent wife's friend want to know if the initial wife is okay, you know, or want to meet them. I met my co-wife's very dear friend. She was great. We had a good time and it felt like I knew her, you know, practically my whole life. We just got in there, spoke as women and um, kept it really peaceful and nice. And I, I met another good, great person you know, what a great personality. So I'm blessed and I'm, I'm really happy and I'm grateful that, you know, we all can come together and get to know each other outside of just being, you know, a wife, you know, we've met as mothers, as sisters, as helpers, um, and as friends. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this story time because it had such a beautiful ending. At first it was a little like, you know, but I knew that the people that I was talking to and dealing with are good people. I really love them too. I love all my friends. I love my family so much. And I still continue to make the offer them and the people that love them too, and just want to try to make things happy and better and the best that they can for those involved. And they're seeing the vision in the big picture and letting us just live our lives and, you know, keep working on ourselves because we got to do this personal development work to um, have that fulfilling life that we all want and know that we can have, you know. Um, I'm going to leave you guys with a little GLC. I'm Coach Fatima. Again, one-third of Outstanding Personal Relationships and OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com. Remember, guys, if you want to join our Relationship Mastery Inner Circle, I have to tell you about that. <coughs> our Relationship Mastery Inner Circle, please connect with us at OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com slash RM for Relationship Mastery. Uh, we retrain, teach, and coach every week. You'll get a, one of us every week every month and at the end of that month you get a specific special q a for our relationship mastery inner circle members which is great and that's where you get to ask us some of your most burning and pr pressing questions or just maybe get some clarity on some things so again gonna leave you guys with some glc make sure you are growing intentionally loving fearlessly and connecting on a higher level every single day i'll see you guys in the next one salam alaikum peace here are three ways outstanding personal relationships can help you. One is by following us on our social medias. Follow us on IG at Outstanding Relationships and on Facebook and YouTube at Outstanding Personal Relationships. And make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Number two, make sure you head over to OutstandingPersonalRelationships.com and subscribe to the email list. From there, you will get downloads as well as updates, any and all updates. And you also get an update on the release of our new book, Let's Talk Polygyny, Uncensored. Number three, if you are serious about polygyny relationships and really developing fulfillment and happiness, make sure you register for our Relationship Mastery Inner Circle which is members only, which is downloads. It includes access to us live on a weekly basis. So that's at outstandingpersonalrelationships.com slash RM. We'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Peace.